Hey everybody, it's coffee time with Ross. I usually stand here with my Bible at my counter when I'm waiting for my coffee to be made. And I really don't study, this is not a study, it's just a, my daily reading, really. Uh, and the Lord leads me to, to different spots at different times. And I was reading uh, Hebrews chapter 12, it's in the uh, New Testament, way back in the back, before James. And uh, it's, a, it's a powerful verse. Uh, it's that Jesus is our example if you're a Christian. If you're a believer in Christ as Savior and Lord, God come to earth as man, you want Jesus to be your example. You want to be more like Jesus and less like yourself. John 3.30 says that. John the Baptist said that I may decrease after his ministry was over that I may decrease and he would increase. So hopefully you want to be more like Jesus. I do. Less like myself. And that can be a difficult challenge. By the power of Holy Spirit, we can, we can accomplish that or step forward in the right direction, being more like Jesus. It says, Therefore, since we have a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and sin which so easily entangles us. So he's saying here, the, the witnesses have been there, done that, if you will, that are in heaven, the prophets of old, the apostles of, of, of biblical times, uh, they understand what it is to, to be in our position. All of them were human. Jesus was 100% human. But he was 100% God. He never quit being God to become human. And this is encouraging to us that we have a great cloud of witnesses. We have people that are... Uh, that understand that have gone before us, that have lived in this, in this flesh body which is a difficult challenge for Christians, especially with everything that goes on in everyday life. And this is very encouraging. He says, okay, this is how you become more like Jesus. Verse one, it's a long verse. Let us also lay aside every encumbrance and sin which so easily entangles us. Now encumbrance may not even be a sin. Encumbrance may be something that's in your life that's keeping you from being more like the Lord. It may be a nuisance in your life or some like a thorn that you can get rid of and ask the Lord to, to take it away. He may take it away. But it, encumbrance could be a hindrance, something that's just not in the way. Maybe it's a, a, a friend, a so-called friend that you just need to depart from. You need to spread your ways. That happens all the time. And if you need to do that, do that. It could be anything that's keeping you from a healthy, vibrant prosperous relationship with with Jesus Christ and, and holding you back encumbrance may be just your hands are tied with something that you can uh, say Lord untie untie this as it says in in my translation uh, every encumbrance lay aside those things so lay aside those things you can say things that are one not important uh, in life that we we let grab grab us and affect our relationship with others and of more, more importantly with our Lord and Savior. So he said, lay aside those things that are hindering you or, or encumbering you. And the sin, he says, well, if you have sin in your life that's keeping you being more like Christ and your relationship is, is tainted because of sin in your life, there's a specific sin. He says, get rid of it. Ask God to forgive you in Jesus Christ's name. You can go to the throne of grace anytime in, through Christ. He's our great mediator, our great advocate to God. So you have that, you have that, that, that option to say, Lord Jesus, God, forgive me of the sin that so easily entangles me right now in my life. Don't let your sin get too long. I always say, the longer your sin list is, the heavier it gets, and the burden is great. Cast all your cares upon Him. Cast all your sin upon Him. He died on the cross, Jesus did, because He was without sin. He could pay the penalty for your sins, and He was made to be the sacrificial lamb for your sins because He fulfilled the law, uh, the, the, the civil law, the ceremonial law, and the moral law, which is still in effect for us. Have you lied? Then you sin. Are you lying? You're sinning. Are you stealing? You're sinning. Are you committing adultery? You're sinning. You get the picture. 
the Bible says to know what sin is, is transgression against the law. Not just the Ten Commandments, which you can start there. It's other parts of Scripture. There may be something in your life that is keeping you from your blessing, keeping you from your relationship with God. And he says Jesus is the example. So we want to be more like Jesus, but there's some things here. We're letting an encumbrance in our life keep us from that, or we're allowing sin in our life to keep us from a, a strong relationship with the Lord. And then he's speaking, and he says, which so easily entangles us. Now, sin can entangle you. It can make you fall and trip. Not a good place to be. And God doesn't want you to... Oh, they're clean enough. God want, doesn't want you to be that way. He wants us to walk the path He has set before us. He'll widen the path if we stumble. If we fall down, He'll lift us up. If we're humble in our life. And let us run with endurance. The race is set before us. What is the race? The race is, I'm where I am today. I'm not going to be where I am for eternity. We're going to live eternity with God forever in His kingdom. But right now, the kingdom is in your heart. That kingdom come that will be done as on earth as it is in heaven. So right now we can we can strive and, and, and ask the Lord to help us be more like His Son. How precious He is. To run the race that we're here on earth. The earth, this is a race. I'm not dead yet. We, we don't know where our, our journey is going to lead us, but we know that our path, it says... So we can run with endurance, so we can get to the finish line, so we can finish the race strong. There's plenty of other scriptures about running the race to win. I've done lots of sermons on that. Go to sermonaudio.com and put Ready to Go Ministries in the, in the tab, and you'll have, I've got 200 sermons that, that you can get on your cell phone. But run the race with what? Endurance. Our life here is an enduring race, not a sprint race. Some people come to know the Lord and they're all fired up, which they should be, because he's brought them from sin and death to life and righteousness in Christ Jesus, God has. But then they run out of steam, if you will. Was it real? We don't know. I'm not the salvation police, but your, your Christian experience with trials, tribulations, and troubles is an endurance race. Do not try to sprint your spiritual journey out in a hundred yard dash. Most people, I was pretty good at, at a short burst just years ago. But as far as endurance, not so much when I ran physically. The athletes that run a mile under four minutes, they're basically sprinting a mile. Have you ever tried that? That's not an endurance race. And they're, 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 they're racers that race you know, the, the marathon for, in two hours and nine minutes. That's almost, that's a six minute mile. That's unbelievable to me. But our Christian, and spiritually speaking, we are to run with endurance. So don't get ahead of yourself. Let God work in your life. The power of Holy Spirit is in your life working to help you run the race. So he said, don't let every, uh, give, lay aside every encumbrance, the sin which so easily can entangle us. Yes, you can sin as a Christian. And you will, according to the Word. If we confess our sins, he says that's going to happen if. It's a present, present in, the, in the Greek word. It's going to happen. You're going to sin. But don't let the sins entangle you to keep you from enduring the race that is set before you. And then it says the race that is set before us. We have different things. We have families. We have ministries. We have our work. But then we have our spiritual life. Our, what, is, what is it that you want more of God of? You do you want to know Him better? Do you want to get closer to Him? Do you want to finish the race and finish it strong? But you can't do it, you can't do it in your own power. Holy Spirit, He will help you run the race with endurance. And God will forgive you in Christ Jesus. If you've never been born again and you're listening to the message, Go to needgod.com or some other sites. You'll find out how to be saved. Or you can go to my sermonaudio.com, ready to go. And then I look for and type in 
a sermon titled "Born You Must Be Born Again." It's a 45-minute sermon. It goes through the Old Testament all the way to the New Testament. Do you want to be born again? If you died today, where would you go? Heaven or hell? Or is that something you're unsure of? How can you be unsure of something so important? If we were in a plane at 20,000 feet and it was time and we had to jump because the plane was about to crash and I had parachutes lined up for everyone, would you come to me and say, I'm, I'm going to not need the parachute? Well, you're going to be expected to jump. Jump is the sin, is the, is the death. The parachute symbolizes Jesus. He will save you from the jump to come. And you're going to have to be, you're going to die one day. It may be today, it may be tomorrow, it may be 10, 20 years from now, I don't know. You may be young listening to this, but it's going to happen. Are you prepared? If you really understand the significance of the parachute, which the analogy is Jesus, you would be snatching it from me. And sometimes if somebody has to look over the edge of, in the airplane to understand the significance of the parachute. So if you've not been born again, and if, if you died today, you would die in your own sins, and that's not where God wants you to be. It's not God's will that any should perish, that's hell, but all come to repentance and belief in His Son, that's heaven. And in Ezekiel it said, God does not take pleasure in punishing the wicked. People ask me all the time, why does a good God send people to hell? Well, that's, that's not, he's, he's a great God. He's a perfect God. But His love is perfect, and His wrath is perfect. And his nature is perfect. Read the Ten Commandments. Jesus fulfilled those perfectly. And the civil law and the ceremonial law. So they couldn't accuse him of any sin or breaking the law of any kind. The ceremonial laws have passed. And the civil laws, some of them still stand. But most of them were for, for that period of time. You certainly don't want to go 80 miles an hour through a school zone here in our country or any country, do you? You'd probably get arrested. As we close and for coffee time, so we talk about sin, the endurance, the encumbrance, the run, the race with endurance. Don't, don't give out. Don't run too fast to the race that is set before you. And then the last part in verse 2, these are two big verses. You can study these out. I am just happened to read them before my coffee. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Who is the author and perfecter? Is it you? No. Who gave, gave you enough faith to be saved? God. Do all people come to know God through faith? No. Does God want that to happen? Yes. Is God sovereign? Yes, He is. But He says fixing. In the Greek, it's, it's, it's that intense gaze on something. Fix your eyes on your circumstances. No, that's not what it says. And boy, don't we have circumstances. Don't we have a lot in our families and in our, in our uncertain times. Every day is a different day. This is comforting for us. Fixing your eyes at gaze. See, I just gaze at whatever it was in my, in my loft. But when you drive a car, you, you fix your eyes on the road. If you don't, you're going to swerve. Have you tried to text and drive it up? Oh, yeah. We all have. Admit it right now. So when you look down just for a second to, oh, who is that? And you find yourself, you, know, you say, well, I got it. It's just for a second. And then you swerve across the line or you just swerve in your own lane or you know, and then you go, I shouldn't do that anymore. Well, you didn't fix your eyes on the road. Fixing your eyes on Jesus, He is the author and perfecter of your faith. It's not a preacher. It's not a priest. It's not a TV evangelist. You learn how to know the Lord through His Word. And if we fix our eyes like we do when we're supposed to be driving safely on Jesus, it will please God. I know we have circumstances here. Remember this, the disciples in the storm? going across the Sea of Galilee, they took their eyes off of Jesus and they got fearful. God doesn't want anyone fi fearful fixing our eyes on Jesus. That gaze, you know when somebody's staring at you? You know when that happens, right? 
So like, like you're riding in the car and doing the right thing, focusing on the road, not taking your eyes off the road because you want to be safe. But spiritually speaking, fix your eyes on your Savior and Lord. Because casting all your cares upon Him is what He wants you to do. If The Bible says if God sent His Son to die for you on the cross to save you from your sins, how will He not also freely give you all things? What a great verse it is. I believe it's in Corinthians. If He went to that degree of punishment for His Son to be made sin for us, how much more will He freely give you and me as a born-again believer all things? But you've got to do some things. There's conditions. Verse 1, lay aside every encumbrance and sin in your life that will entangle you to keep you from running the race. After you have been forgiven and you take all that encumbrance out of your life, run the race with endurance. Ask God every day to give you the strength, the courage, the boldness, the stamina to run the race. Holy Spirit, come into me. Empower me. Maybe you've drifted off from God. Maybe you just don't read your word enough. Stay in the Word. Just pick it up wherever you are, wherever it is in your house, while you're waiting on your coffee or waiting on your, 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 uh, your children from school. Pick up the Bible and read it while you're waiting for your doctor or for your children at school, for wherever you wait. Just pick it up just 15 minutes. It will empower you. Not, not uh, that fanatical power that you see on TV, people barking and shouting and... And, and going crazy, that's not biblical. I didn't find that in Scripture anywhere. But I do find that you can live a successful life when you fix your eyes on Jesus. It will get troubling. It, it doesn't say here you won't have troubles. But it says here through what you need to do and I need to do, fixing your eyes, gazing strongly in the Greek word, it means to strongly gaze into, into grab Fixing your eyes on the road like you would in a car. Makes sense, doesn't it? So today, fix your eyes on Jesus. He gave you the faith you needed to be saved. He'll keep you saved. He is the perfecter of your faith. Your faith will increase. Did you know your faith? you need faith to be saved? For sure. And along the road, your faith will increase as you continue to trust God through the Word. Not through special revelation. Don't wait on somebody who says, well, I'm waiting on a special revelation from God. Here it is, my friends. What do you need that's outside of Scripture today that God hasn't put in front of you every day of your life? Special revelation that's not written in Scripture? No, we don't need that. Study the Word to show yourself approved. Read the Word. It pleases God. And then pray to God as you read the Word. It will help you to... Form your prayer life on where you need to be. Lord, I need to fix my eyes on you more. Help me to do that, Holy Spirit. Give me the power and the strength to run the race with endurance. And if I have sin in my life, I confess my sins to you, O Lord, that I may run the race with endurance and that I acknowledge you are the author and perfecter of my faith. Help me, Lord, not to sin in word, thought, and deed that I may please you in every way. Give me the power and the direction, the strength and the stamina to do what I need to do while I'm here on this earth. I ask it in Jesus' name. I'll finish the verse two later. Endure the cross, Jesus did, despising the shame. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Take every encumbrance out. Those are just hurdles. They may not even be sins. And then the sin in your life, take those out. It will tangle you up like barbed wire or a rope around your feet. You can't run a race. I don't care how good you are, how spiritual you are, if you allow sin to tie you up. You can't run a, you can't run a hundred yards, ten yards. It, you'll keep tripping. Or you'll be just going like this. So all y'all, run the race with endurance. Jesus is the example be more like Jesus and fix your eyes on Jesus. Call me up at 1-866-RTGM.org. What's 1? No, it's 1-866-941-RTGM. Uh, or write me or Facebook me. 
you can get a hold of me. I'll pray for you, or we'll have somebody call you if you need prayer at that prayer line as well. So God bless you. Always remember, do what you can, where you can, when you can, the best you can. But do something. Run the race in Jesus' precious name. If you want to get involved in local missions, just look us up, Ready to Go Ministries. We're there to be found on Facebook and YouTube and the usual places. Just Google Ready to Go Ministries. God bless you. Remember, no Bible, no read, no feed, no Bible, no Bible, no breakfast, no read, no feed. Read your Bible, feed yourself spiritually, and then go have some toast and coffee. God bless you. See you down the road. Take care.